Now here you can see the three different arrangements of the unbraced member with different loading and the restraint arrangement in such a way that all the three different cases, the banding moment profiles are different in nature. Now on the left hand side, which is the ideal one and that I've mentioned before, which is having the rectangular bending moment profile. Now, if it is having the rectangular bending moment profile, then it indicates that at every location along the entire stretch of the unbraced length, the compression flange will experience the same magnitude of the compressive stress, which means that at every location, the compression flange has been utilized to understand the maximum possible bending moment carrying capacity along against the lateral torsional buckling. <coughs> Now coming to the second one, the loading and the restraint arrangements are in such a way that the bending moment profile is triangular which means that at the center the bending moment is at the peak and it starts diminishing as it approaches the ends. Now you can see this is the center, the bending moment is at the peak. Similarly at the compression flange, the compressive stress is maximum at the center. Now as my compression flange width doesn't vary and it remains constant along the entire length, this is very important, my compression flange width is constant because the geometry doesn't change, the width doesn't change. But at the same time, the compressive stress developed in the compression flange get decreased as it recedes from the center. So you need to note this very carefully that the width of the section is constant but the stress developed in the section is varying. So one parameter is constant and another parameter is uh, getting changed along its length. That implies that in the compression flange um, is not fully utilized along the entire length. The compression flange is underutilized here. The more it is utilized at the center and less it is utilized as it approaches towards the ends and this is the reason that the member reserves, this member reserves some additional moment carrying capacity against the lateral torsional buckling. Or in other words, this member is having the higher bending moment resisting capacity compared to the previous one. Now let's see the third one, which will make the picture clearer. In the third one, you can see that the moment has changed its sign. You can see here, the sign here is not same as the sign here. <clears throat> that means at the central part the top flange is under compression and at the extreme two parts the top flange is under tension. So here the comp it is the compressive zone so the flange at this location is under compression and at these two extreme zones it is under tension. Now here you can see that my total effective length of the compression flange get reduced. Just see the red marks here, these two red marks. Here you can see the two red marks. You can see here, these two red marks. So the effective length of the compression flange is in between the two red marks. That means the portion in between these two red marks is the compressive zone of the flange. So the reduction in the effective length of the compression flange means that the element is less slender and less susceptible to buckle. So that means here my total length of this flange can't be considered as a compression element because the effective uh, portion um, which undergoes compression is from this red mark to this red mark. So the reduction in the effective length of this compression flange means that the element is less slender and less susceptible to buckle. Obviously, as the length has been shortened, it gets more stiffer against the buckling. So higher the length, more the element becomes slender and higher the chances of getting it buckled. Now here you can also see that my length has been reduced by making the compression flange less slender. And also the compressive stress which we take at the central part, the compression, the compressive stress also start decreasing and at this point, <coughs> the point of contraflexure, it is getting reversed. That means the top flange undergoes tension, so the effective length of the compression element has been reduced and the compressive stress 
has also been reduced so I'm re reiterating the point here is very important here <coughs> the complete or the overall uh, element length or overall flange length as far as the compressive zone is concerned has been reduced so the effective portion which is under compression has got reduced and on top of that my compressive stress is also not consistent it is also getting reduced as it moving away from the center so ultimately this situation makes the entire member much more stronger against the lateral torsional buckling that means my member has not been properly utilized or the element the, uh, the, the, uh, on the top has not been properly utilized and a significant portion of that element still remain underutilized and that makes this member having the maximum bending moment resisting capacity against the lateral torsional buckling among all the three different scenarios so if you compare the three different cases then the third one has the maximum bending moment resisting capacity then the second one and then the first one which is the ideal situation having the alpha m value of unity so the alpha m value of the third arrangement is higher than the second one and then the first one